Welcome to Global Midweek. We trust that you are doing well, and we just wanted to have a small informal time when we could share some things back and forth with you of what's going on and looking ahead, and at the same time trying to be maybe an encouragement to you during this week. We want to thank you for all the words of encouragement and comments that you've made about our Global Online. We hope to be getting better and better at this every week. Uh, we've never done this before, and I think we all are learning as we go along. And for the one person who asked uh, about the dress and the shots, no, I was not wearing pajama pants while I was doing last Sunday's group. Now, I want to ask you to do me a favor. I want to remind you that this is not just something we're going through. This is something that the entire world is going through. And our missionary family in different parts of the world are having a even much more difficult time than us in so many ways. And so we want to be praying for our missionaries. If you don't have it already, I encourage you to please go to the app store and get our church app. Go to the section where it says missions and help us by praying every day for one of our missionaries. We have a list from the first of the month through the end of every month. We just ask you to make it a habit to daily go and bring them before the Lord in prayer. Now this week we have received a few video reports from our missionaries and I'd like to share those with you at this time. Good morning Global Church family. We just wanted to give you guys an update on how Tiffany and I are doing here. We're doing fine. We are in quarantine and we're okay. We also want to ask you all to be praying for three things if you could. Pray for opportunities to share the gospel to everyone who asks us questions about what is going on and also for proper equipment and good health for all the medical teams helping the sick right now. And also pray for provision for our church members who've lost their jobs. Um, pray that God will give them peace of heart and mind and that we as a church body can help and meet those needs. We pray for you guys always. We love you and hopefully we'll see you all soon. Hey Global Church, um, we're over here in London, England. Just wanted to give you guys an update. Uh, the situation over here is a lot like it is in the U.S. Um, we've been on lockdown uh, for about the last two weeks uh, as a family. Um, there's a lot of people that they're asking to stay home except for essential workers like they are over there in the U.S. And so it's it's been a lot of getting used to a new normal for a while. Uh, as a church, we started doing our online services a couple weeks ago. Uh, the learning curve is is quite steep in some cases. Um, so just uh, be praying for that. Um, we also uh, know that this is a, a hard time, especially on our boys. Uh, since Sarah and I are both considered high risk, um, it does kind of make them feel anxious sometimes. It does kind of weigh on their minds a bit. So if you could be praying for that, we would really appreciate it. Um, also, if you would just pray for us as a church, um, that as we are trying our best to stay connected through... Um, our small groups on video chat and our Sunday services through YouTube that we've recorded, um, that these things would still keep our church family close together as we try our best to just be a, a church body at a distance. Uh, so we would really appreciate those prayers for that. And then also just pray for our church families. We do have some close friends who are in our church that um, have had cases already. So if you could just be praying for that. I know that I'm not saying anything that's that's not happening over there in the U.S. But we just um, we would just appreciate that you would continue to pray for us as we're over here in London. Uh, we are in the capital city. Uh, the capital is seemingly ahead of the rest of the country. So if you could keep those things in prayer, we would really appreciate it. Love you guys. For the last few months, I've made it a habit for every Sunday morning getting away from my regular Bible reading time and just going through a psalm each Sunday. Last Sunday, the psalm I had was Psalm 61. The backdrop to this psalm is found in 2 Samuel chapters 15 through 19. 
These are the chapters that talk to us about Absalom, one of David's sons, and how he rebelled against his father and, and over a course of many years staged a, a rebellion and a coup to the point where David had to leave the palace, had to leave Jerusalem. It was not a good time. It was not a good time for David. And even though he loved his son, he certainly did not enjoy what was going on. On his way out of town, some people turned against David. And it was just a very bad time. And even though he was only 20 miles away, which to us doesn't seem very far, when you're walking, when you are taking all of your family with you, it can be a very long distance. And David longed to be back in Jerusalem while he was in exile. Absalom was killed in battle. And now things and plans were coming together for David to return to Jerusalem. But to be perfectly honest, the political situation was still not totally settled. So this was a very difficult time for David. And he was mourning in many different areas. And so this is a psalm he wrote, and I'm only going to read the first three verses. Psalm 61, verses 1 through 3. It says, Hear my cry, O God. Listen to my prayer. From the ends of the earth I call to you. I call as my heart grows faint. And catch this. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I. For you have been my refuge, a strong tower against the foe. When I read the commentaries about this passage, one of the things that jumps out and that almost all of them seem to mention is that David's cry was from the depths of his soul. And the reason for that was very simple. That the beginning of all of this, it was not because of Absalom. No, Absalom's turning against his father goes way back to David's sin with Bathsheba. The other children that are born, among them Solomon. And all of these things were now, even though God had forgiven David of his sin, all of the consequences of that sin are now beginning to pile up against him. But it says David cried out from the depths of his soul. And he asked for this one thing, something that we could all learn from. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I. Picture, if you would, the turmoil. Make, maybe like a storm that David was in, and from every side things were just buffeting one up against the other. And he says, I need to go up to something that is higher than me. And he was asking God, take him to that point. Why? Because the rock that was higher than David was where he could anchor his soul. The rock which was higher than David was where he could find safety. It's where he could get a different perspective on things. It was on that rock that was higher than him that he could find stability and peace. Right now, you and I and the world around us is going through a major storm. Whether you believe it's as big as it is or not is not really the question. The people that I've talked to this week whose family members and friends have the virus and all the precautions we're taking so that we don't get it, these are all storms. And we each need to cry out to God. Lead us to the rock that is higher than us. Jesus is that rock. In Jesus, we can find the anchor that we need in these troubled times. Jesus is the one in whom we can find safety. Does that mean we're not going to get sick? No, it does not mean that. But it means that even as we get sick, if we do get sick, Jesus is there and we will be safe with him. It gives us all a different perspective. As I've been talking and listening to pastors over the past few weeks, everyone agrees on one thing. Church will never be the same after this is over. But they all seem to agree it will probably be better. 
stability. In Jesus, day by day, we find the stable influence that we need to be able to handle all the news that comes our way and finally rest. I don't know how many people I've talked to say, even though I'm not doing as much as I normally do, I find it hard to rest. Remember, Jesus said, come to me and he would give us rest. So let us ask the Lord just as David did. Lead us to the rock that is higher than we are ourselves. We each need that today. Could I encourage you over the next few days, call on him consistently. Go to him every day. Look to him for your needs. Look to him for all of the things that come your way. He is the rock that is higher than you.